there's the ocean and there's a lot of things that we haven't explored, right? And our ocean, of course, is resource. And a lot of our food comes from the ocean and maintaining the ocean health is very imperative for the future generation. So yeah, um, the entire experience was great, unique, I should say, and we look forward to more of that. The more people know, the more they will be able to know how to conserve and protect. If we know we have these sea turtles, if we know the importance of our sea turtles, let's say that they're the keystone species, they're important for ecosystem balance, then we're able to know, okay, this is, this is why we have these sea turtles. This is the importance of sea turtles. We need to protect these sea turtles. This is why we have our dolphins. The dolphins can help us in the long run in terms of, even if we look at it um, from an income point of view, development, persons coming in to see these things, tourism builds our country's income, then we can say, okay, we need to protect our dolphins. Those were two young Guyanese researchers, Maria Fraser and Ivana Thompson, who are part of the team that spent six days offshore Guyana identifying the larger animals found there. Upon the team's return early Friday morning, Sophia Edgehill, a conservation officer at WWF Guyana's The Guyana Office, related that there were numerous interesting species found offshore. These include a pygmy killer whale, which is actually a dolphin, a sperm whale, loggerhead turtles, and several species of birds. Since Guyana does not have much information what species exist in this water, this research is particularly valuable. But the team did not engage in this research simply to see and record what animals are found in Guyana's marine or oceanic space. They engage in this research to help inform decision making on protecting wildlife in Guyana's marine environment. Meanwhile, head of WWF Guyana's The Guyana Office, Aisha Williams, said the research would support efforts being made to develop a marine spatial plan. This plan is expected to guide decisions on how to use these marine resources sustainably. And this is particularly important as Guyana moves to expand its Low Carbon Development Strategy, LCDS, to include efforts to protect the country's marine environment. So this expedition um, we think will definitely contribute to all of um, the planning that's being um, done right now for LCDS. We've already been having discussions with, with um, various officials, contributing what we found so far within the project over the last four years. We've done, um, um, you know, modeling, uh, analyzing various information, speaking to stakeholders, um, on their use and the importance of the ocean environment. And definitely this contributes to the to, to, to development of um, that expanded um, LCDS. The expedition was implemented by WWF Guyana's and the Protected Areas Commission, PAC, through funding from the European Union delegation in Guyana. And the Deputy Commissioner of the PAC, Odessi Davis, also noted that Guyana has only traditionally focused on protecting the wildlife on land, but the body seeks to focus now on marine space and identify what areas in that ocean space could become protected areas too. Now, with oil and gas development ongoing offshore as well, this baseline study will help the local conservation authorities to understand and assess what particular impact that economic activity might have on the wildlife. Davis posits that concerns over the potential impact of that sector are exactly why this research is being engaged in. In so doing, she contended that Ghana would be able to avoid the mistakes made in other countries and as such maintain a good quality habitat for the wildlife. Should any adverse event occur, essentially, the local conservation bodies would be able to use the existing data to illustrate how wildlife has been impacted. Reporting for the newsroom, I am Vishani Raghavir.